for being here. Can you tell me a bit about your background? Um, my background is in mathematics. Mm -hmm. I started with pure mathematics in uh, geometry and then continues with applied mathematics in Prus Media and uh, in the field of oil reservoir. Then I completed my PhD in, uh, in collaboration with the hospital mm -hmm. um, where I worked with uh, some uh, analyzing the data. Some of the data is uh, kind of biomedical data, yeah. MRI data and so on and was in a collaboration with the radiology department. After that, I worked um, as a data scientist in an AI company, mm. a consulting company in Oslo, in Meta. And right now, I started a postdoc in both uh, University of Bergen and Imperial College London, where I'm going to work on geometric deep learning and uh, graph neural networks. And the application in uh, uh, what is uh, sustainable, uh, marine sustainable, and um, uh, shipping, uh, smart shipping, and weather okay. forecasting, and so on. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. interesting. Okay. Now you've, uh, you're going to present a paper here as well. What's the paper about? Uh, the paper is actually is part of my PhD. Mm -hmm. um, in general, we are going to simplify the classification task from uh, complex longitudinal data to uh, um, a standard uh, classification, uh, image classification, deep learning methods. Why would you want to do that? The reason is that, um, uh, the, the first of all, longitudinal data means that we, uh, we are going to, we are measuring uh, the, um, during the time, just one items. For mm -hmm. example, in our cases, we have, uh, for, for one participants, we have several, uh, MRI during the time, during the aging. Yeah. And we are going to follow the change in the size of the volume of the brain. Okay. Makes uh, sense. Yeah, and then, so we have several MRI images for just one participant. Applying machine learning uh, and this kind of uh, standard machine learning and this kind of data is a challenge because these uh, images are um, dependent to each other, mm -hmm. but machine learning can apply on just independent data set. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, and so, uh, and also um, MRI images are 3D, and uh, what we have done is that we have several uh, 3D images for one participant. We extract the main features from them and um, uh, convert them to a 2D images. Okay. And then we apply, it, uh, then it's ready to apply normal uh, machine learning, a standard machine learning yeah. methods on that, that one. And the reason, the, um, the final goal is to classify two different um, level of dementia. And uh, the point is that in um, neurodegenerative disease, such as Alzheimer's disease, uh, predicting, diagnosing at the early stage of the disease is very important because mm -hmm. maybe the medicine effect on the mild AD, but it doesn't affect on the... Um, case. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why it's important and we wanted to see how we can uh, follow the change in the size of the brain because with normal aging, some part of the brain is declined. Also changing, yeah. Yeah, it's declined, and, but this kind of disease accelerate this decline. So we want to see that if the slope of the change is accelerated in earlier stage, b before the doctor uh, recognized from the behavior of the yeah. patient. And was that yeah. the case? What did you find? Um, it's, uh, we found that uh, actually ba based on the um, MRI and the uh, only a structure, because we only applied it on the structure MRI, we have several different MRI images and other neuroimaging like PET scanner, uh, but only based on MRI we got that we can find some change before it's, uh, it's uh, present in the behavior mm -hmm. of the uh, patient. So it can help. It can be kind of um, in, yeah, in b uh, beside of the other methods, it can yeah. be a method to apply. But it, it needs to um, consider the other kind of data, such as the, uh, some genetic data, which is important, and mm -hmm. also some functional MRI that shows the activity of the brain and not just the structure of the brain and also some other data that when, if we add those data also in the study, it can uh, help to improve the results. And when do you think hospitals will start using this technique? 
um, um, it's actually this kind of technique should be work closely in a collaboration with them to get feedback and help them and then uh, start to up, uh, apply it as a uh, useful application. But in general, right uh, I didn't do that because uh, I finished my PhD at that okay. time. Yeah. But so my colleagues at the hospital are still working on the, and there is a group on aging, yeah. and they work in different aspects of the aging and different disease related to the aging. So that's good. Yeah, that's, uh, they want to be a, a really good uh, center for about the aging uh, okay. in Norway. Yeah. Can you mention something about in general? How long do you think before uh, this will be applied? Uh, to recognize that, yeah, that's also a challenge related to the data, mm -hmm. uh, because um, the data that uh, we have, um, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a very challenging part because uh, the steps, the the distance in the longitudinal data, the distance be between the steps we get the MRI is important. We try to remove some of the uh, data at the end that recognize, for example, as. Um, uh, Alzheimer's disease. Before that, they said, "Okay, it's a um, it yeah, yeah. mild cognitive impairment, for for example." And we decided to remove the last step and see if we can predict from the previous data. Yeah. We could predict, but the distance was like six months, which is too late. You want it to be here so here. yeah, we we should have more data to can remove more steps of the MRI and see when we can actually find the starting point for the disease. Okay, so that's the yeah. next challenge. Yeah, that's the next challenge, because okay. gathering the data in the hospital also is very challenging. And also yeah, getting MRI for this kind of disease, because when you don't feel any problem, you don't you go don't to the doctor, MRI, this, yeah. yeah and when you feel something, then it's kind of late already. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, so are you looking forward to your presentation? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just like one hour or two hours. Yeah. It's the last one. I guess I'm the last one <laughs> today. Yeah, good luck with that. Thank you so much. How has the conflict been so far? What have you done? Uh, I actually attended in the starting key keynotes, which was very nice. Uh, I can say the conference is uh, better than my expectation. The level is higher. Oh, that's and good so to hear. Yeah, <laughs> it's managed very well. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think the, it's really high level conference. Okay. Is there yeah. anything you're looking forward to in the conference? Um, um, yeah, that some topics are interesting that I want to join, and also there are uh, different topics, and uh, especially in our field, as I worked as a also data scientist, work with different kind of data set mm -hmm. and different application. And what I learned is that sometimes some application in one area is completely different from the other one, can get the idea that what you can do for the other one, like that. Now I'm going to work on the. Uh, shipping and uh, marine sustainability, yeah. but uh, and the graph neural networks, which this field is something that people uh, are using at the hospital as well. And I most probably again back to the hospital with some knowledge that I get from here. And here also, as is the very different topics, uh, we can get some ideas too. Cross pollination between ideas. Yes, oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank Thanks you so much. much for your time. Thank you. <laughs>